Next one is incentive funding grant for agricultural education. This is something that Pam's working on with uh, Ann Catherine, Ann Catherine, who's the administrator in charge of DVR, which is our Des Plaines Valley Regional uh, Co-op that we belong to for our applied arts classes. And I'm going to let Pam uh, talk on this briefly. Okay. Um, Ann contacted me about this opportunity uh, that exists through incentive, incentive funding if we have some classes that um, students can take in a sequence that have to do with the agricultural sciences and agricultural education. And um, we have one that's currently going this year, and that would be um, AP Environmental Science. And then if we were to reinstate with enough enrollment the C team, that would be our second. You need two classes in a sequence that students can take which uh, is a pathway, one of those career pathways that the state of Illinois is really trying to stress for students that can then translate into um, post high school uh, study, further study, and that Triton is, is really trying to collaborate with us on so our students can just move right into the program there. And they're working with um, University of Illinois mm -hmm. as well um, to, to get, fun, get some credit for kids who take things at, at Triton. So what this affords us is um, it opens up the doors to some opportunities, but we have, as anything you have with a grant, you have some um, standards that you have to meet. And one is that, for instance, James Holt needs to be, uh, he's the teacher of the uh, science portion of the C team as well as the AP Environmental Science, and he has to get approved through West 40, our, our educational um, group that we work with. Um, and then he has to prove that how many hours that he has in the field, in the actual field doing work. And so he's starting that process, which even though he's starting it, it doesn't commit us to anything, but there's a timeline for this. So in order to um, be considered for this for next year, we have to um, sign this form, which allows us to enter the process to be considered for the grant. And the grant, um, as you can see, we, we have, a, have to um, try to have a three-year plan, and that would be, doesn't actually commit us to run the C-team next year if there isn't enough enrollment, but our plan is to offer it again next year if there's enough. So it's $10,000, but what you do is you get $5,000 the first year. I have a list of all of the um, ways you can spend that grant money that they will give us, and with that money you can get anything from um, equipment, you can have resources, um, professional development, instructional materials, uh, it could be computer software, it could be iPads, it could be tools for, for a garden, you know, there's a whole list of what you can do. So um, that money, that $5,000 is given to you to use for the program development with, um, and you just have to let them know what you're using it for. You charter what they call um, FFA, which is Future Farmers of America, but our ecology club would, would stand as that, but we have students involved that there would be a number of them that would be committed to working with that larger organization, which is an excellent organization at the state level that allows them leadership opportunities. And so I have a whole list of the kinds of activities that our students can be involved with there. And they're, um, you know, willing to work with us on that, where some of these conventions and events occur. Some of them are very close in the area. Others, you wouldn't have to worry about sending our kids downstate. A lot goes on um, in the in the suburban area around us. And we could work with um, the zoo to even host something that they would consider. So they're excited about that. What would happen, for instance, if, if we got involved in this, there's no cost to us. There's a potential for few, for other funding that would come our way. For instance, um, in the past, schools get what they call seat money. So however many kids you have in your C team and how many kids you have in your AP Environmental Science, they will pay so much per student for that, for being in the program. That's if that's funded at the state level. If it doesn't get funded, then we would be out that money, but that could be, um, you know, could be up to $25, I think, in the past per course, but they don't know if it's going to get funded again or not. But that's part of the incentive program. The second year, if you meet all the obligations in the first year, you can then get $5,000 for a second year to put toward equipment and materials for your program. Um, then if you move into the third year phase, it basically depends um, entirely on the state funding right now. It, this is this this funding exists for the the two-year program of the ten thousand, but the future funding is obviously down the line. We'd have to find out if it's not available. 
um, that would be no harm to us, but there's the opportunity to make um, from, it could be small amount, 2,000 up to 4,500 for the school. Um, but I think where this is really powerful is it connects uh, our teachers and students with a larger uh, group of professionals out in the field and other students that are committed to the same things that they are in environmental education and sustainability. It allows curriculum for our teachers. Um, it allows professional development, a leadership opportunities it's for our students. Thing. It's a way to showcase the great things our kids have already done. You heard when the C team families came and spoke to you. I think um, that's why Ann Cothran thought we were a natural for this. We're already doing most of this and could really be a model for the state. So no cost to us, just a potential benefit. If the second year we weren't able to have enough kids to run the C team like we are this year, um, they actually could take our equipment back. So we, for instance, if we got iPads, on a card, you know, we got some iPads for field research, they'd take them and then it would go to a different school who was able to sustain their program. So we would have use of materials for a year and that's where we would do it. We would buy something that would augment our program but not be dependent, our program would be dependent on it. So if we had to give it up the next year, we'd know it would be going to another school that could utilize it. Um, very excited about this because of our interest in this and has given connected me with other grant opportunities and other organizations um, such as ComEd. She's trying to, to work with us in order to open up all kinds of opportunities for us. So I think it's, it's an exciting thing that um, Jane Holt and Brennan Denny, the science chair, are very excited about um, partnering with. There is a potential to uh, also include zoology as one of the animal sciences if um, Dave Monty has the same experiences in his uh, professional outside of the teaching in the real world of research which he has done so they're working with us to try and make this as feasible as possible and that would get us more <coughs> seed money so it's an exciting you, we wanted to look into grants as uh, as a creative <coughs> way to to bring funding into the school and so it, it um, I don't think it comes with a lot of risk but any I, other questions for Pam this is pretty exciting, but it seems to me that the reason for its being is a pragmatic reason um, dealing with agricultural science and uh, making better crop yields and things like that. Um, what the C team is, is I see the connection that has to do with growing things, you know, so you get a baseline understanding of what these things are. but. I see this as being a very pragmatic thing and, and raising a bunch of kids who understand how soybeans grow. Like my neighbor down the street claims to be the second best soybean trader in the world. You know, he makes a lot of money trading soybeans. I could see people like this really appreciating this in their early years of education. Would they channel our participants, our participation in toward the pragmatic side of uh, farming? Um, not necessarily. There's a lot with urban gardening, um, recycling, sustainability, just being, um, you know, responsible citizens of the earth. Um, so th that's, you know, more what we would find out. What, what James has, has determined and has to continue to work through is 60% of his curriculum has to match the curriculum for oh. this. And he's looked and it looks like a, a really good match. So it's not like we have to change our courses in order to fit this. It, it fits already what we're doing, but it then connects us where we can Skype in with other students, we can work with professionals down at the university level. It's just a really rich opportunity to um, expand what, what we've already started here. So, um, but I, how specific they are, yeah, some of the, some of the clubs the FFA clubs in certain parts of the state are very much into the raising the animals. Others are much into more into the farming, and some of them that are thriving are in metropolitan areas where students are doing what our students are doing here. They're they're getting an urban garden going, and they're trying to work um, to be uh, to respect the animals in in the, the that are that we're sharing the the area with. And, and invasive species, looking into kinds of things in the forest preserves. So it really fits where we live here and connects to the zoo and the forest preserves and, and what our students are growing up around all the time. So um, it seems like a natural for us. Well, the works. Could you clarify right. one thing? Any other question? I, I don't know if Kevin had a chance to send the question, but it, the grant's 5000 which we may or may not get because the state has to fund it in the future. <laughs> but 
It so it sounds like we have to join FFA and get teachers certified. Sure. Is there some additional cost for us, or is there no additional? The cost only for the us? only cost that I could think of is that if if the or the events that we have to go to for the FFA, there's a bus cost, okay. right. a transportation cost, but we can use some of that five thousand to offset the cost of going to right. some of those okay. events as well. So Please. I don't really see that as prohibitive. So would a sponsor, uh, a staff sponsor, be? Uh, or uh, relate. I don't know how to say this. Would we have to pay a stipend to a teacher sponsor who would be in charge um, of this? Jane Holt and uh, Dave Monte co-sponsor the Ecology Club, so they said we could work within our existing within club. We just have to have a certain framework. number of students who want this leadership opportunity yeah. to be willing to join the other organization, and that's I think twenty-five dollars to join or whatever, okay. and then we would then send them and, and help facilitate their. Um, their growth in that area. So there are some costs, but we can use some of the funds we get and to, to offset the cost. All right, do I have uh, any other discussion on this? Do I have a motion then? Well, I think I'll make the move. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, Just John. one last thing. Sorry, uh, we brought this up at the uh, curriculum advisory committee, whatever we call it, <coughs> and um, about getting grants and stuff. I hope this is just a start, and thank you very much, Pam. Great job. All right, do I have a motion on this? I'm going to change it slightly. The result of the Board of Education Township High School District 208, Cook County, Illinois, hereby approves the memorandum of understanding concerning the incentive funding grant for agriculture education as presented in the April 10, 2012 Board Agenda Packet. Do have a second? Second. Second by Gary Gritchen. Any other discussion? All right, Marianne. Mr. Gritchen? Yes. Ms. Ruska? Yes. Dr. King? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Welch? Yes. Mr. Cindy? Yes. 